All right, we'll try this again. It is 1231 on, uh, let's see here, Tuesday, August 8th, and it is 78 degrees, and we're here in Chatsworth, Georgia. We're going to make a little run here to the Department of Motor Vehicles. Some people call it, uh, well, most people call it the Department of DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, in some uh, in our case, it's DDS, Department of Driver Services. Some places call it the Secretary of State, like in Michigan. Anyway, point being is, is I had a restricted license, and now I've done my uh, necessary requirements to get my 100% full license so I can continue on and do my functions without having to worry about if I'm violating a restriction of any kind you know you can't drive between such and such time or you know I can't go to the gas station I can only you know go to work and back you know emergency situations hospitals anything to do with court or probation or uh, treatment that type of thing you're allowed to go to hospitals pharmacies and but you can't just go out and drive down to Burger King I mean you can but if you get stopped depending on the cop and that's a whole nother story I won't get into but more than likely you go to jail so and your car will get towed so there goes another couple thousand dollars anyway yeah I'm just checking out the view that we got here from from the like using the uh, hero cam GoPro it's the original it's 10 years old and but it shoots in pretty good 1080 and I'm doing some audio checks as well as uh, you know video quality and you know just an overall overall generic test so we got about 10 minutes here, eight minutes or so to get to our location and then I'm gonna turn it off. Uh, I don't wanna go in and cause a ruckus. People get freaked out when there's a camera in their face. And being that it's on my, my head, I think there's a pretty strong chance that they would notice it instantly and uh, start asking questions, blah, blah, blah. Although legally, Legally, you can film in a public facility or anywhere from public property. If you're on a public sidewalk, you can film anything your eyes can see. And I learned quite a bit about our Constitution, that type of thing. But that's not where my YouTube channel is going. I'm going to help the homeless. They need help, man. It's, uh, it's a bad deal. You know, a lot of people have uh, ideas on the homeless that they're lazy and they just want to live off the government and they abandon their kids and, well, you know, that might be the case in some cases, but when they get lumped into one category as just downright filth and uh, waste, of, waste of human space, waste of taxpayer money, they're not willing to help themselves I think you'd be quietly surprised as to how false that really is and we got a lot of that here in uh, in my neck of the woods here in North Georgia and there's a pretty prevalent population of homeless as there is everywhere but you know I'm trying to get some number some you know statistics from Department of Labor and or the Health Department to determine you know what the numbers actually are but I guess that's insignificant I guess you could say you know one is too much and uh, you know a lot of right off the bat people think yeah well they're drug users or they're uh, running from the law or you know a criminal of some type 
you know, maybe some of them just got out of prison, don't have any friends or family support to help them get back on their feet. And, uh, you know, some are addicted to drugs and alcohol. You know, that might be the case, but that's a sickness. It's a disease. So we're going to see what we can do to help these people. You know, you might see YouTube videos where they're your, uh, some of the guys out there will put, you know, give the first person that gives them a dollar, a hundred dollars, a five hundred dollars, a thousand, takes them to Walmart and buys them five hundred dollars worth of groceries and tents and clothing and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'd love to do that, but I I just don't have the budget. They get a lot of donations from uh, charitable organizations, companies. Uh, perhaps maybe Frito-Lay donates a thousand bags of chips to a person or uh, bottled waters uh, hygiene products soap shampoo perhaps uh, women's products feminine products you, you could get uh, socks and underwear are big that's a big deal you know they go days and days sometimes with you know in shoes you know without showering um, so they're they're just you know lacking the basic essentials just to even survive many 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 homeless people are just found dead you know in a tent or a shoebox or behind a store or at a gas station you know or in a garbage can it's sad it, it really is so we're hoping to bring some attention to the bigger picture here and not put any blame on anyone because that's not what this channel's purpose is it's just to get the other side of the story from people and try to try to rule out the stigmatism of that they're just general you know waste of life in the sense that they're not willing to help themselves and they're uh you know leeches and it's our tax dollars that are supporting them in the first place well if you've seen how they lived <laughs> and how are living from day to day on a daily basis we're going to be doing some interviews to uh, clear up some misconceptions people may have and you know maybe just change one person's mind at a time you know some of these people are mothers fathers they're somebody's brother and sister and son or daughter you know, there's people, there's men and women on the street with their with their kids, and not knowing from one day to the next where they're gonna sleep, where they're gonna be safe. You know, think of the weather conditions. It's only well, it just turned 80 degrees. It started at 78 five minutes ago, but you know, what if it's 105 middle of the afternoon? It's not as though you can just go walk through the mall and cool off. You gotta find a tree, you know, some type of overhead shelter. What if it's raining? You know, and then you got the opposite. You know, the snow and the ice and the sleet and the consistent brutal overnight temperatures in like Minnesota and Michigan and you know, a lot of the you know northern states. But uh, we're at Airport Road, so we're uh, probably three four minutes from our destination. But once again, I'm testing out the hat cam here. Let me get some more water. And uh, we're just gonna get, you know, the viewpoint of the, of the people that are homeless and find out, you know, what their, maybe some of their, what their biggest regret is. Maybe get some information from them if they're willing to share. Uh, you know that type of deal kind of doing a you know profile story try to keep them short you know a couple minutes but uh, at first I just want to be able to you know introduce myself to these people which they are people by the way uh, intro you know introduce myself to them you know let them know I'm not a threat you know I'm not the police or anything like that because that's a whole nother story you know they don't have transportation necessarily uh, they get robbed, beaten, routinely, you know, 
they, everybody steals everybody else's stuff. It's it seems to be it's it's like a cancer in their own community. But when your back's against the wall, desperate times will call for desperate measures. And I don't think there could be much more things being desperate than the fact that you don't have your own home, you don't have an apartment, and you're lucky if you've got a tent to sleep out in the woods, at least for a few days until the property owner has you removed or trespassed. So, you know, compassion's the name of the game, and that's what we're going to focus on. All right, gang. I have to go to this driveway, I'm pretty sure. And nope, I'm in the wrong one again. I'm going to cut out for now because I'm going into the building to take care of my stuff. And then we'll go from there.